Okay, cool. Let's join within first 10 minutes so we can quickly start the class. Let me just minimize this. There we go. Okay, when I open .js file, it's saying syntax. We'll have a look. Don't worry about it. Cool. We start with our class. What have we done? This is going to be the second class of our React JS. In the very first class, we've done the very basic intro. What is React? And that is what we are going to keep, right? First two three classes, or let's say four five classes, we'll be just going over for understanding React inside out. Which major topics includes ES6, arrow function classes, variables, destructuring, spread operator, modules, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? Then we'll go for React hooks. We'll talk about discussing React hooks, and that is once we go with the custom hooks at the end. That is when we'll mark our React to be completed. Just like we have done it for HTML, CSS, JavaScript, one by one taking individual element, completing all, we're going to do that with React. And once our React is done, then we'll start with our projects. Three projects we are targeting. One is going to be the Netflix, Netflix or YouTube clone. Second going to be a Spotify. And third is going to be any custom project which you guys want. Probably a, definitely a portfolio making website, right? So these three projects we're going to complete. Anyways, coming back to this, what we have started in last class, what we have covered, let's quickly revise that with javascript arrow function that was the last topic of javascript let's quickly revise arrow functions are what they were introduced in es6 which is ecms script 6 latest version is 24 to 15 in the es6 arrow functions what does it do it allows me to write a shorter function syntax that's it just like i write a simple function 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 name parameters written statement i can do it in much simple way using arrow function that's the advantage i can use arrow functions with or without parameters and i can use arrow function with or without parentheses also we have seen the code, let's see one by one. So this function, I return this. It's a normal function, right? A normal function without using arrow function. Same thing if I have to do it using arrow function, I can do it in a shorter form. So this function doesn't require any parameter. So that's why I can pass it like this, no parameters required. And I can return the value that I want to return, right? Arrow function, I can have it with the parameter also. So that is called props in React. We'll go to that, we'll discuss what do you mean by props, but just telling you. The parameters that you pass in a function, those are called props. Now, A plus hello world, so I can print, I can see, hey, hello world, right? Similarly, I can use error function without parenthesis also. So this time not giving parenthesis till I get the same output. Then we discuss a normal function with parameters and arrow function with parameters. Same thing. It's not just one parameter, multiple parameters with or without parenthesis. That gives us the idea of JavaScript arrow function. And that marked the end of our JavaScript. And we started with React. So intro to React, what is React? What are components? What is the state? What do you mean by render? Installing React, that is what we have done in the last class. Oh, so installing React and having our first React app, I will keep that on hold for some time. We'll go through it. And then finally, we'll go through the complete React. Then we'll continue, come back to the React project. React project is a different thing and understanding React is a different thing. Okay. Now, the number one step is that I told all of you to have a GitHub account, which all of you had. Create a new repo with the name of React project, whatever we're going to make. And when we'll go for that project, I'll tell you one by one. Netflix loan back sector, et etc. And then Heroku setup. Once we'll go for that Heroku deployment, I'll tell you at that moment. Anyways, we started with what is React? React is a JavaScript library which is used for building fast and interactive user interfaces. It was built by Meta in 2011 and it is an open source, right? Now, in terms of tech stack, we talked about how does an overall web development works? Overall web development, there is front end, there is webcam, right? Front end includes client side languages like JavaScript, HTML, CSS, TypeScript, along with any library or framework. React, Angular, View, these are some of the very popular libraries for JavaScript. On the back end, we have server side languages like Node.js, Python, Java, C Sharp, C, Colling, etc. Now, in the mobile apps, if I have to make, it's Java and Kotlin. And mobile apps in the Android, I have to make, it's Java and Kotlin. If I have to make in the US, it's Swift. What is the purpose of React Native or Flutter, for example? The purpose of React Native or Flutter is, if you are making a product, you have to write three different code bases, one for the web version, one for the mobile app one version, I Android version, one for the iOS version, which is definitely not a good idea. But how what happens if I combine some one common code base and one common code base will work for website as well as Android, as well as iOS, using the feature of write once and use everywhere. That is what we have achieved using these frameworks, React Native or Flutter, okay? React Native is very different from React. It has, so React has only to do with the website. It has nothing to do with anything on the Android side or the iOS side. But React Native, however, this is just minimizing your effort so that you write app code one time and you can add for product all across for a website, for Android app, for iOS app, et cetera, et cetera, okay? 
Then you move to next to understand React better. React is a library which contains UI components, render and display to have a very interactive UI and it's a very extremely fast, right? Now in terms of practical example, I told you the difference between a library and a framework. A library means, let's write it down here. A library means UI components, render and display. Framework is something which is composition of all this. Now, what does that mean? Libraries, framework is basically library plus components. In terms of practical example, I told you, let's say you have a room where you have certain utilities also. Machine. Now, when we say one BHK, I'm talking about room plus utilities. In one room, that is a library. All the individual utilities, these are your components. And when you combine library plus component, that becomes your framework. Okay. Now, then we start with red components in terms of red components. Discuss that in detail again. Red components is a piece of UI which will be independent, reusable, and isolated in my React application. Repeating three words again independent, reusable, and isolated in my React application. So my React application is a combination of component. So every React application I have that has at least one co component that is the root component and all other components are the child component. Two type of components can be there, class component and function component. That is what we're going to see later. So in hierarchy, every React app can be decomposed into components where root is a parent component of all and everything is a child component. So root is what you call as app.js that you have in our React project that we have seen. Inside that, I have three child components, one, two, and three. Inside that also, I can have some child components. So everything is built up of components. So in a practical example, if you look at Twitter as a web page, Twitter as a web page, it has a home page, it has a profile, it has a feed, it has a tweet, it has a like, it has comment, replies, retweets, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's what Twitter contains, right? And then certain trending hashtags, news, etc. Now, in my profile, everything I'm able to see in my profile. So my home page would be the root. That is the root element. Child elements can be feed, profile, and trending. And corresponding to profile, I can have further subchild, which is added DP or added name or something, right? Under that. Then we talked about installation of React. We have followed all the steps one by one. That is what I'm going to do a bit again. Install node and NPM. That is part number one. Once you've successfully installed, how do you verify node version and NPM version? Then steps to create the React app, that is important one. We go one by one. First step is to install create React app module. What is this create React app module? This create React app module tells you anytime you're going to have, so you just need, need to install it only once. Create React app module contains Babel, it contains Webpack, it contains other features, right? So anytime or you have to use a React app, this is just a one-time installation. Next time you don't have to install this module anywhere. Minus G is for global. This tells me, hey, NPM, I want to install create React app module globally in my computer, right? So next time, anywhere in any directory, I want to start a new start project, I can directly use that. I don't need to install it again. NPX, NPX just use it for the one time. It doesn't install all the dependencies, which is just one time use. If you do NPM create, that will just include much more dependency. Both will work fine. So NPX create React app, first step, they one. So what do you do? I'm using the create React app module to create my project and the name of my project is first step they want. Then I just cd into that project and I do npm start to start running my project. Now, when we start running our project, we see certain things. First thing is that we see this network. So once our product is successfully, once our my red server is successfully up, I see localhost 3000. 3000 is a default port I'm running. Obviously you can see in the default port. Also, I see on your network 192.168.0.13 and port is 3000 again. What is that second one? First one is the website I'm accessing. What is second one? Second one is telling your current IP address, which is provided by the rate. It's not your actual IP address. It's just a submask. Means whatever network your device is connected to or all your devices are connected to. For example, in my Wi-Fi, if I connect with any device, I go to this link 192.168.0.13.3000. I'll be able to see the same React app, which I'm seeing on this part. So not only you can see it on your PC, you can also see it on any device which you are using. Any device connected over the same network, you would be able to see. Second, in terms of project, we have seen certain files, which is under public, public folder content index.htm and favicon. These are the details which are public to all. So you can read your index.html, you can see a space source. That is the HTML details. And there is no refresh once you change it. You just save it, it's updated. Why? Because it's running a live development server. Fourth, it removes the components or remove the comments from HTML files and see the page source. You will see complete page source is just two things. One is a root element, one is a div element, one is 
calling that development and that's what we are going to see today also and if you delete this your entire body will be deleted that is what we have just played around with our code we're going to continue with that but prior to that we'll go much deeper dive into react js basics and then we'll come that any doubt so far let me know if it is clear type clear in the chat any doubt so far let me know if it is clear type clear in the chat the very first thing somebody says their app.js is giving you a syntax error the syntax error is probably have deleted something which is incorrect so let me just walk you over here so your app.js there we start with this is my index.js and this is my app.js all i ask you to do was just delete the extra things just keep this welcome to my first app so just check out if you have the same content if not still you're getting the error let me know most probably you're getting the syntax error so in that syntax error you will also get a message where exactly it will give you the line number where exactly is the problem okay and let me run this also i'm just going to check first where i am i'm here i will just see it to here and i'm going to type and start when you open it is showing yeah that's why i'm saying so do you npm start then it is showing that's what you're saying for me it's working fine all the changes file itself not able to open file itself not able to open what does that mean you're not able to open app.js that's what you mean okay then it is something else why you are not able to open app.js that is certainly a different thing to consider okay what i can do is we can do two things as of now actually either we can continue with the class or i can give you the permission we can discuss so let's do one thing let's continue with the class at the end when we are left with 10 15 minutes not just you any particular problems do let me know i'll give you the permission to share the screen and then we can resolve it there. okay but as of now, we have not done many changes, so your app should not be crashing in any way. Okay. Anyways, coming back, this is what we have seen. This is what we were able to build in the last class. Welcome to first app. We just played around with the code, deleted some few files. And if I right click and inspect, you would be able to see this is our HTML code. Let do right click new base source. That is our HTML code. Straightforward, hardly only 20 lines of code, simple HTML, nothing else. Okay. Now, after this, now we are going to start with our deep dive into React.js. I'm going to close this or you can keep this open. Whatever we works, we'll come back to this one. Let's close this. Let's come back here. I'm going to put the chat window here. Cool. We have talked about React, the basics of React, what you're going to discuss with home intro and get started we have already done i'll show you by get started then we'll dig down into the es6 so very first thing what is react js okay a javascript library used for building past UI components. Okay. A JavaScript library used for building past UI components built by Meta. And that's it. Nothing else. Nothing much to discuss in the definition as such. Next question is important. How does React work? How does React work in total? If you remember when we discuss HTML, CSS, JavaScript, that is where we talk something called DOM model. What do you mean by DOM model? Every page that you have, it's defined into documents, right? So root is the first document and everything is the child of it. So document object model, as we said. How does React work? React actually creates a virtual DOM. What do you mean by virtual DOM in that thing? One, you have the original DOM, so browser DOM is there. So in browser DOM, it doesn't directly impact on the browser DOM. It just changes on the virtual DOM. So 
instead of manipulating browser storm react creates a virtual dom in memory okay in memory where it does all necessary changes before making changes in browser dom that's it okay what does react does react creates a not created react creates a virtual dom in memory so instead of directly directly changing on the browser dom so any html css javascript code you do you are directly changing the browser dom yes memory refers to local storage that's correct so instead of directly manipulating inside your browser dom that is what you do by html css javascript it creates a virtual dom in memory so in terms of virtual dom whatever changes you are making the changes are happening actually in your virtual dom and then once you are done with it when you push it that is where you see the changes in the browser dom okay what else second react only changes what needs to be changed okay what do you mean by what needs to be changed so out of out of all source code if a change is made in one functionality react will re-render only that portion rather than complete website okay what does that mean that means i made a change in footer header footer whatever right instead of changing everything in my web or my complete website and reloading it again react will just change the footer so the change footer or header whatever you want to change and refresh you will see first of all there is no refresh required part one and immediate changes are pushed so only what needs to be changed red calculates a delta so red calculates a delta and makes the changes that's it that is how react works so two things number one in terms of react to work it creates a virtual dom in the memory rather than actually manipulating the browser dom second thing is react only changes what needs to be changed that's it okay this part clear to all okay now if this part is clear now i'm going to next part which is react get started in react get started this is going to be important one two things are there number one for react in production if i want to use react in production for using react in production i have to use npm and create react app and these okay that is something that you have done in the last class that is used for production apps and if you technically if you just do npm build push you have a product ready app also something else you have to do so whatever you've done in the last class for storing it and creating a react application that was for production apps something you want to push it to productions so you can just push that your app is sufficient enough to push that okay but if i want to use for using react non-production right locally or i can use simple html also as of now you would have seen you are able to run javascript code css code inside html you can also run react code inside html okay so just like javascript and css react code can also be run inside javascript 
Latent words can also be run inside JavaScript. Sorry, latent words also run inside HTML. Now let's have a look. I'm going to run an HTML code. I'm going to run an HTML code or having a React code inside HTML. Let's have a look. So I'm just going to open a new file. Let's save it as react.html. Yeah. Let's start one by one. And I want all of you to observe it very closely. How I'm able to run a React code inside HTML. As of now, we have seen the React code. We have seen the production ready React code, which is good because that's eventually we'll be making in our projects. But even starting from that high level, let's start with the very basic minute level or very low level. When we started HTML, we started with a simple file. We created the HTML code. Then we write CSS. We embedded the CSS code in HTML. Then we learned JavaScript. We embedded the JavaScript code in HTML. Now we are going to embed the React code in HTML. And once we gain mastery over the React inside the HTML and other things, then we'll go for those full fast products. So this product that we have seen or the demo that I've shown you how to install and all, that is a full fledged product. For example, if you have to make an app like Netflix or Spotify, that is where you will use that, right? But for understanding React in general or going to become a master in React, let's start with the basic one, then we'll go for the project one. Okay, so I'm starting with the simple HTML code and I'll show you how you can actually use a React code inside your HTML. So let's start with normal HTML. You define doc type HTML and that will also close your HTML. Open your HTML. Okay. Now, what else you need? So make a head and I need to close the head. Okay. What else do I need? I need a body. Normal body. Okay. Now, one thing that you need to understand is if you are running, if you're running HTML code, if you're trying to running a if you're trying to running a React code in your HTML code, you should be clear with three things. Okay. First two things will allow you to write the React code, and the third thing will write to allow you to the JavaScript X syntax. So JSX is completely different from JavaScript, just to be clear. What is JSX? We're going to discuss a bit later. I want to introduce three, three files. Script SRC. And one more script SRC. Let me just find it and copy paste it from our React project that we made. So let's go here. Let's go to index.html. Let me open that. Yeah, this looks good. Okay. These script source we have here. This is my head. My head closes here. Now I move to the body. What do I have in my body? I'm just going to create a simple div. Give ID to the div. Let's say call it as root. Div ID equal to root. And that's it. Close the div. Nothing else is required here. And now I can use a simple JavaScript. Inside my JavaScript. Script type, this is going to be a paper, okay? Now I can define a function. And inside my function, I can tell what I have to return.
using React in HTML. This is what I'm going to make. And just close the edge one tag. Okay. And yeah, just return it from there. At the end, you just render it react dom dot render. What do you want to render? I want to render this function given like this. And where do you want to render? In my div. So document dot get element by ID. What? The div name, which is the root. There you go. All right. Now let's go over this code and try to understand what is happening line by line. Very first thing, if you look at this code, simple 33 lines of code, this is just an HTML file, nothing else. Inside my HTML files, I know how to run JavaScript. I know how to run CSS and of course HTML. This demo or this piece of code, we're trying to run React code inside HTML. Try to understand the purpose first. We are able to know how do we succeed successfully write CSS? How do we write JavaScript in HTML? Fine. This time we are going to write React in HTML, okay? In order to do that, the very first thing that I've done is I've included three files on the top. Have a look at it. First file, line number six, this is react.development.js cross origin, one script. Line number seven, this is react.dom.development, again cross origin. So this is for React 18, this is for React DOM 18. Line number eight, this is not related with React, this is Babel standalone Babel min.js. The first two lines that you have created, React and React DOM, these allows me to write React code in my JavaScript. So inside this JavaScript, I'm able to write this code because I've included line number six and line number seven. What does line number eight does? Line number eight is not specific to React. It is specific to JSX. JSX syntax, not JavaScript, JSX syntax. This line number eight allows me to use JSX syntax. You are seeing here. Okay, we are anyways going to discuss this, but just to tell you these three lines I have to include if I have to run my HTML, if I have to run my React code as well as the JSX syntax. Okay, now we go to the body. Inside my body, I just created a div element, divide equal to root, nothing else is given in the div. Now what I do, I write a, I write our JavaScript here, so you can see script start and script ends. In the script start, I start the type as it's a Babel. It means I'm going to use what? I'm going to use actually my JSX syntax, and this is going to be a text type. I write a simple JavaScript function, hello, and I'm returning just h1 using React in HTML. That's it, simple JavaScript function. This is interesting. In my React DOM, where did I get the React DOM? Line number seven, I got the React DOM. React DOM dot render. This is the function for render means I want to render the web page on my React DOM rather than the actual browser DOM. In this random fun in this render function, two parameters are given. First, what do I want to render? And second, where do I want to render? Repeating, what do I want to render? Where do I want to render? Where do I want to render is document.getElementById root means I want to render here, line number 14. What do I want to render? This is a hello. Where is the hello? This is the function. This is called function component. You make a call to this function, but you cannot do this because the hello you are having, you are using it here in JavaScript. You are using it in JSX syntax. So whenever you have to use it in JSX syntax, you will be using like this. Any component, hello, space, backward call, backward slash, and then closing it. This space is by purpose. Do not see that I put it by mistake. This space is by purpose. Anytime you call any component, either a functional or a class component, you give the name, opening bracket, opening tag, the name, a space, a backward slash, and then a call, closing tag. That is how you call it. And then you close your JavaScript here. This is your body clauses. This is your HTML clauses. Hey, I want to run my React code in JavaScript. Line number six, seven, and eight. Line number eight specifically tells you for JSX syntax. Then you write a simple ID here, divide equal to root here. Inside that ID, what you're doing, you're writing a simple JavaScript code. In that code, you simply type a function and to render that function, you're using like dom.render. Where you want to write it? I want to write it in root. What do you want to write it? I want to write this hello function component. 
Look at this code. Let me know any doubt. If it is clear, type clear in the chat. Look at this code. Let me know if it is clear. Any doubt, please ask. All clear? Okay. If it is clear, let's see the output of this page. I'm just going to run this file. Okay. Here we run this file, and this is the output that you can see on the right side. What does the output say? The output says using React in HTML. Whatever we have just run, we are able to see that in the output using React in HTML. Anything you would like to change, anything you'd like to play around, it will work fine. So let me do one thing. Let me divide my screen into two. Let's stop sharing first and divide, split my screen into two. Okay, I believe now my complete skin is visible. Can you guys confirm if my complete skin is visible? Okay, now this on the right side is the code, left side you are seeing it here. Obviously it's HTML5, so changes I make, I need to put a refresh, any changes I make, right? But if I'm running it on a live server, then I don't need to refresh because this is running on a live server. But this is HTML5, so I will make the changes. A function hello, this function hello is rendered by this component. Yeah, I got this component, add get element ID by root, all good. Now, what I want to do is, what I want to do is, I want to pass and I want to check if I can pass successfully the parameter also. What will happen if I try to pass a parameter? Will my code still work or will I face an issue? Let's try to do that. What I want to do is, basically I want to pass a parameter inside my hello function, okay? So let's do something. Let's clear this. Let's do something. I pass a parameter value and I want to return K. If I have to render it, I would say dollar value. And inside my hello, I can pass random. Although we'll do it better in our DOM model, but I just want to have a testing here. Let's see. Okay, my value is not rendered, means there's an error. If there's an error, let's skip it then. The props are not rendered properly here. This is fine. Remove this. Okay. The props is not rendered properly here. Anyways, we can definitely do it in the React project. Why this is not running? Now we have changed all the changes, right? Okay, hello as a component. Now it's running fine. I'm using React in HTML. I wanted to run it as part of props also, but props we'll see later, not an issue. This is what I wanted to show in the first place. Now, once I'm able to see this as part of my, as part of my React component, now what do I need to do next? The next thing is to play around with this code and to understand this code better. But prior to that, let me readjust my screen sizes. I'll be just sharing the 
sublime text changing back the browser and now coming back to the sublime text okay two things to notice here if i have to run this in a html file how do i do it run in html three files needs to be included to run react in html include three lines in your head what are the three lines let's see this one and what does these three lines tell me let also have a look The first two lines, they are telling you to react and react DOM. The first two lines. And what is the third line telling you? Third line is telling you for Babel, which is allows to use JSX syntax. JSX syntax we are going to discuss a bit later. Okay. That is what the overall view that we have seen. That is part number one. How do we use it in the HTML and how do we use in the React or how do we use in the production using NPX and create React app that we have already seen, right? So I don't need to explain that, that you have already seen. This part clear to all? This part clear to all? Oh, if this part is clear, now we move to the next part. Next part is React ES6. What is React ES6? So we have already seen the JavaScript 6 version, ECMS script 6 version. So React uses ES6. So the common features will be used for React to use in ES6 are this. And that is what we are going to discuss as well. One by one. First, we'll be going with classes. Second, we'll be going with arrow functions. Third, we'll be going with variables. Fourth, we'll be going with array methods. Fifth, we'll be going with modules. What else? Ternary operators and spread operators. These are something that we'll be going for. Okay. So React uses ES6, classes, arrow functions, variables, array methods. We have seen classes, we've seen arrow functions, variables, all the array methods. Modules I have not seen, ternary operator, which is if else spread operators, we have not seen. In ES6, we have already seen the majority of them. But now what we are going to see is we are going to see how do we use it inside React. In ES6, we have seen it, but now we are going to see it inside React. So let's try to go one by one and then we'll try to understand this. So the very first thing is number one, React classes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make the changes here so you can see the code part as well as you can see what I'm going to do in terms of a class. We're going to see with the live demo, of course. So any code we'll be writing, we'll be seeing it. But prior to that, let's start with what is a class? Class is nothing. Just you create a class, you create a constructor and you can call that function. So I want to create a class, name it as, let's say session. I can have a simple constructor. So name it as constructor, whatever you want to give in the parameter here. And this dot, whatever object value you want to give you can give the object value so this name you can give it as name or this dot session name you can give it as name okay and what next you can define a constant my session as just how you create a new object, new session, give the session name, Mern batch. That's it, a simple class code. Now, repeating this, what is this? A class, class name is session. 
ideally the class name always start with a capital letter i use a constructor so named is constructor i'm passing a parameter's name so what is this kind of constructor this is called what is this kind of constructor called where you have a parameter come on guys a constructor with the parameter what is it called correct a constructor with a parameter is called parameterized constructor if you don't give any parameter that is called default constructor okay copy constructor when you're copying one object into other three kind of constructor so this is called parameterized constructor now this is the class and inside this class i am making an object out here so my session is what my session is just an object how do i know it's an object from the session class where i'm passing in the constructor man batch so this name will have man batch let's put it here this name will have man batch right and this merge man, what you are saying, this dot session name equal to name means my session name will become my session name will become what? My session name will become one batch. This part clear? This part clear? Okay. Now I'm going to simply run this code that we have in a React class in our HTML file. So I'm going to clear this. And now I'm going to run this in HTML file. So copy this. This was our HTML code. I'm pasting it here also. So you can have a look up layer. Now, I want this class to be run. So I'm going to copy this. And whatever extra is there, I'm going to remove this. HTML script, all of that is fine. Okay, and let's remove all that and simply run it in a script. So I'm gonna take this all, remove this all. A simple board is fine. Div ID is also I don't need. Remove this script. I can keep. Remove the Babel. Don't need this now. Just get a simple class. Constant my session. What do I want to do? I want to do document dot write again this is a simple javascript that we're doing right now what my session dot session name simple javascript what do you think will be the output of this come on guys be quick what do you think would be the output Correct. The output would be whatever you're passing as man batch, that would be the output. So if I refresh it and I go to my website, I refresh it, you can see the output. The output is just man batch. Simple, right? Whatever you're returning. Coming back to my code, a simple class. I create an object of this class. I said constructor name this name. So the moment you create this, the moment, this is the time you're creating an object. When is a constructor called? A constructor is called when you create an object. So the moment you create this object, line number 14 is executed. The moment line number 14 is executed, this constructor will be called, will be made. It means this month batch will be assigned to this session name. Line number 16, you're writing session name contains month batch. That's why the output you say is month batch. Look at here again. Here is the output that you have achieved. Simple how to use classes in JavaScript. This part clear to all? This part clear to all? Okay, easy. Now, there are the simple classes. Now the question comes, can I actually use, can I actually use functions also in the classes? The answer is yes, you can use functions also. So in order to make function, let's try to make some function also. This is my constructor and let's call something, some name to the function. For example, topic. Okay. In my topic, I'm saying, I'm returning a simple function. In one batch, let's say, so this dot session name 
we are learning react that's it i want to return this and i want to do what i want to call this function right i want to call this topic also so in order to call this topic i will just say my session dot let's do both this also and my session dot topic also there you go now let's have a look what will happen what does this class contain now this class contains two functions ideally just one function constructor is not what you count as separate other function something called constructor which will be invocation which will be invocated whenever you'll be creating an object and second is a function for it obviously this function does not have a parameter here now the moment i create constant my session equal to new session one batch this line will be executed and this dot session name will become one batch part number one when i say document dot write my session dot session name the moment you say my session dot session name so session name will become what one batch so we'll give the output as one batch next line when you say my session dot topic now what will happen it will call the function topic inside topic it will print in plus this dot session name what is this dot session name this dot session name is your one batch so it will say in one batch we are learning react that is how this will be populated refresh this save this refresh this and let's have a look let me share my screen there you go okay just going to refresh this there you see the output one batch we are learning react as simple as that okay you want to change in console log we can change in console log also nothing would change okay so let me create refresh now it is actually logged in the console so when i do inspect i go to console in one batch we are learning react this is what happens when you do console log okay if i change it back to document dot write there you go okay cool coming back to this here we are so in our class what we have seen we have seen how i can make an object of a class how i can make a function and how i can render that function easily as well any doubt in this class guys do let me know any doubt in this class let me know because next parent next is something else which i want to continue with the class this part clear this part clear so definition of class invoking constructor and using function and finally inheritance these four things i wanted to cover three i've covered fourth i'm going to cover now but prior to that everybody clear with this quickly going through what we have done a simple class in that class we know how to create a constructor how to invocate it and how to create a function how to make a function call and how to write all of that this piece of code plain javascript everybody clear come on guys plain javascript this piece of code everybody clear easy right not too complicated now let's introduce next level of i won't say complication but let's try to introduce next level of or something which i want to explore in functionality so i want to now make inheritance so i want to extend this session and i want to extend this session to batch so this is a session i want to extend class batch which is extend session because one session can be executed in multiple batches right so i want to extend like that again i want to create a constructor in the constructor i want the session name or let's call it name and what do i want i want the name and i want the batch name let's call it session let's call it batch what do i want to do 
I want to say, hey, this dot batch name should be the batch that I have passed. And what about the session? So I'm going to call a super function. Super function means I want to access something from the parent class, simple, simple inheritance concept. If I want to access something from the super class or something from the parent class, I can just call it super. So super session like this. Okay. Now, this is a constructor. What do I want next? Let's put it here. I want another function, which is show. In this show function, what I'm doing here is I'm just returning this dot what topic. I call this function plus this. So this will give me the output in one batch. We are learning React. Okay. I can give a space here and batch name is what this dot batch name okay and if i have to call it i will just create a function constant my session equal to or rather than my session i can just use batch equal to what constant my session is equal to new batch inside my batch what do i have i'm calling two parameters session and this so first session will become one batch and second will become what let's say fab batch okay now i can do document dot write my session is not required let's call it as my batch that makes more sense just call the function my batch dot show rest everything will be taken care of okay look at this code and now tell me the output before i show you the output screen simple javascript simple inheritance concept nothing too complicated look at this code tell me what should be the output okay that is partially correct think again it's not the completely correct answer so please think again okay cool that is the correct answer let's see the output now what will happen here is you create a class session you're extending a class batch which extend your session class what do you do in that is you call this function new batch so when you go to new batch this constructor will be called when this constructor will be called first parameter is session which is one batch so you call super super means you're making call to constructor of the super function so initialize session so your session name will become what your session name will become whatever that month batch that you passed so when you say this dot topic topic includes session name which includes month batch that will give you the output month batch batch name is fab batch okay that should be the output and batch name is initialized with your fab batch so this will give you output for this batch name and now you're going to render it on your javascript so let's refresh it and let's see the output. What do you see? In Mern batch, we are learning batch name is fab batch. In Mern batch, we are learning React and the batch name is fab batch. So coming back here, I'll give a space and the batch name is like this. And now you come back here. Now you refresh it. In Mern batch, we are learning React and the batch name is fab batch. Now this looks good. Okay. A simple class function. So in the class function, what was the whole idea? This is your final piece of code. Pasting it here. You can refer anytime you want to. The idea was to cover four things. The idea was to talk about the definition of the class, invoking constructor, invoking function, and then how to use the inheritance. All of those four things we are able to discuss in detail. This part clear to all, let me know. This part clear to all, let me know. Okay. Now second is what? First topic we are done, I'm marking it as done. This is done, this is done, this is done. 
Next is arrow functions. Okay, arrow functions, we have done it very recently. So I'm quickly going to revise it. Nothing too much to explain here. Can explain the inheritance part. Okay, what is the meaning of inheritance? Inheritance is when one class extends another class to use the properties. Okay, that is what inheritance is. One of the four object-oriented principles or programming paradigms. In inheritance, my class batch is the child class and class session is the parent class because it is extending the parent class. Means these details which belongs to the child class, which belongs to the parent class, the child can also use. Inheritance is that properties of parent can be used by a child until and unless they are not private. Okay. So this topic function, I can make a call here also. What do I do here is I make a call to super means go to my parent, right? If you go to the parent with the parameters of session, it will initialize the values. So this session will make a call to constructor this. This will create session name. And when you call this dot topic, now this is interesting part. This dot topic, do I have any function name topic in my batch class? Do I have any function name topic in my batch class? No, the only function I have is the name show, right? When I say this dot topic, Ideally, I don't have any topic function. How am I able to call this dot topic? Because this is used to refer for a current object. So when I say this dot show, makes sense. But this dot topic doesn't make sense. Still, this code is working. It's giving you correct output because this topic is technically just copy pasted here. The moment you use the word extend. The moment you say I'm going to extend the properties means this function automatically comes here. So that is why it does not throw you any error. It is running successfully. You are able to run this dot topic and you are able to run this dot batch name and you are able to run your particular show function as well. Okay. That was the inheritance part. Cool guys. Now moving on to next. That is ES6 arrow functions. That was part one. Part two is ES6 arrow functions. Yep, go ahead. We are not calling show function, right? We are calling, we are calling. That is where in JavaScript we are calling, okay? Without calling the function, you will not see the output, right? So you have to call the function. Now, in the ES6 arrow function part, since we have revised ES6 in our last class itself, I'm just going to copy paste the same thing and put it here. Nothing different is there. Only one thing I would like to talk about, which I will just tell you now. So in our ES6 arrow functions, we know it is just used to cut short the syntax. We can use with or without parameters. We can use with or without parentheses. Enough number of examples we have seen, which is fine and which is giving us the output. Nothing much to add here in our ES6. but just one thing I would want to add is use of this in arrow functions. The use of this that you see in normal functions versus what you see in arrow functions are different. Repeating, this is a normal function, right? Topic is a normal function. Show is a normal function. So the way you use this dot topic, the way you use this dot session name, this dot batch name. In one function, which is a normal function, a regular function, this means something else. The keyword this I'm talking about. But in terms of arrow function, this means something else. Let's try to understand that first. And I'm marking this as important. Now, this as a keyword is different in arrow functions. compared to regular functions. Repeating this, this as a keyword is different in arrow functions compared to the regular function, okay? Now, what do you mean by difference? What is the fundamental difference? So, in regular functions, what does this represent? This represents the object that called a function. Okay. 
whatever object that calls a function. That object can be anything, like literally anything. That object can be a window. It can be a document. It can be button or anything. Something which just called that object. So if I'm making a call to the object by clicking a button, so my calling object will become a button. If I'm calling by window, I'm calling by document. Accordingly, that will change. Okay. In arrow function, what does this denote here? In arrow function, this represents the object that defined the arrow function. This is important to understand. Okay. Repeating it here, the use of this as a keyword is has different meanings when you use it in a regular function versus when you use it in a regular when you when you use an arrow function. Now the example I'm saying is in regular function when you use this keyword, then it represents which object called that function. Okay, it can be window, it can be document, it can be button, etc., etc. In an arrow function, however, in an arrow function, this represents the object that defined that arrow function. Now I'm going to show you the demo, one with regular function and one with your normal regular function and one with the arrow function. We'll see what the difference becomes. Let's quickly write some HTML code. Explanation with code. This is an important interview question. So I'm just covering this in a bit detail. All right. To understand that, I can take this entire code because I have to rewrite everything, right? There goes the entire code for previous one. And here I have to rewrite everything. So removing my script and everything. Inside my body, this is a normal regular function. Okay. Now, what do I want to do from this function is, let's have a look. I want to create a button. Name it as add equal to button. Click here. Close the button tag. Okay. Also, what I want to check here is which this keyword actually mentioned. This keyword mentions object that I call that function for, right? So if I click this, what should be the output? If I don't place this, what should be the output, right? In my script, I'm going to write a class, simple function header. Constructor I'm going to call and let's change something. So in my constructor, I don't give any parameter. This dot value, was ABC. Okay. And what else? Remove this. And that's it. Apart from this constructor, I can use some other method. Change my value. Call a function. Inside that function, what do I want to do? Document dot get element ID root ID D is short and dot in HTML plus equal to close this I don't need anything here remove this now constant my header equal to new header there's no parameter required here what else do I need to do 
I'm using this, so I need to create button ID. Also, I need to create one div, right? I create a div, so paragraph ID equal to root. And that's it, close the paragraph. Script is fine here. I have included the script. I'm going to close the script here also. What else do I need to include? Constant my header equal to new header. Nothing to change here. Object created. Now, window dot. If I want to see where I've actually called it, one way is that I can call it from my button. So I can just I can just check that it is added from the button. Another way it can be called from probably it is called when the page is loaded. So the moment the page is loaded, I can check it from the keyword root or the ID root. And whenever it is called from the button, I can check it from the ID button. These are the two ways I can check it. Okay. So window dot add event listener. If it is on load, then my header dot change value. That's it. Okay. And if it is called by button, then what is going to happen? Document dot get element by ID. Which ID? Button ID. And again, dot add event listener. This is event is click and same function. It is pasted here. This is called by load. This is called by button click. Okay. All right. Now move to next. Let's have a quickly look at the code before I run this. What I've done this, this is a regular function. Regular function means I'm not using any error function. Simple normal function I've used here. You can see change value. In the normal function, what I'm saying, document.get element by id root dot in an HTML plus equal to this. What is that plus equal to this says? The calling function which it is calling that will represent this. Okay. Now I'm getting two, two events. One is by calling on load or one is by calling on click. What is the idea that we discussed? In normal function, this represents the object that called the function. Repeating it again, this represents the object that called the function. Okay. Now, which object is calling this function? Of course, as you can see, it's going to be a load or it's going to be a button. So, my output should be one show object should be the window, other object should be the button or HTML button, whatever it is. So, let's see the output. I'm going to refresh it. Ignore the error, that is fine. Get element by ID is not a function. What did we miss here in get element by ID? I see one error here. Okay, let's see. Document dot get element by ID is not a function. And line number 30 and 10. And then 20 and 12. Okay, 30 and 10 and then 20 and 12. What did we miss here? In my class header, fine, get element by D. Oh, okay, B was not kind as capital, sorry. Let's go back here. Let's refresh it. Again, I get this error, document dot get. Okay, one more place is there. It was small b. Okay. Yeah, no, no errors on console. Now it's fine. The moment I run this, observe something before clicking here and after clicking here. What do I get it here? I'm checking something in the console. This is object and window because there are two parts here. Now, the moment I'll click on click here, see what happens. This gives me object and HTML button element means my this keyword 
is telling me what my next keyword is telling me which is the element which has made a call if i click on an object if you see it here object html button means which part of the function i'm calling since i use the this keyword if i just click it here window is replaced by html button i refresh this again by default window called it so it says window is the object which called it the moment you click this now this window changed to html button element so which element has called it that element is referred by this in a normal regular function okay repeating it again there you go in a normal regular function this represents the object that called the function that object can be a window that can be a document it can be a button okay so this is the normal function i refreshed it again first it was a window because this was called by using a window now it is called by using the html button so it can be a button it can be a window it can be a document etc etc okay this is your regular function code i'm gonna take all of this and paste it here so for regular functions here is the code and here is the output i'll reduce the number of lines so you can check it easily right concise code it will give us just keeping space a bit here that's it okay the output i get is what the output i get is this okay means this keyword represents what this keyword represents the calling function right so whichever function has called this that this is represented by the calling function however in the arrow function it will become entirely different in the arrow function it will become entirely different what will happen in the arrow function this will represents defined the arrow function like who has defined the arrow function so now i'm going to create one more file i'll just copy paste the same code just convert this normal function to arrow function and i'll show you the difference i'll save this as react2.html and move forward this is going to be an arrow function in that arrow function what do i need button is fine pid is equal to root is fine header is fine one thing I'm going to change this function, I'm going to change it to whom to arrow function, nothing else. Okay. And rest everything else is going to be same, nothing going to change. The only thing that I've done is I've changed the normal function to a arrow function. not able to give comments but that's fine okay now once i change it to an arrow function now i'm going to see what is the going to be difference so i open react2.html in a separate page and now here we are now we are able to better compare the difference i'm going to refresh this again so you can see i click here what do i get only object ignore the first part first part shows the type so you don't need to confuse like what is object object if I ignore that everything is an object in javascript so this gives you a very crystal idea between the two let me refresh this let me close the console we don't need it anymore now have a look this is a regular function and this is an arrow function try to understand the fundamental core difference here my window called this that's why i said hey window called this so this in a regular this in a regular function represent who called it this in a arrow function represent who defined it so this was defined by an object that's why the output is object so even if i click here again it's an object click here again it's an object click here again it's an object it is not telling me that where it is being clicked from or where it is being called from it is just telling me who invited him or who actually declared it so arrow fun this in arrow function defines you who defined it however this in regular function it defines you who is calling it so i click here it says button has clicked me click again here it says button has clicked me refresh it it will say window has clicked me okay 
that is your fundamental difference let me take this code as well that was for regular function this is for error functions Remove this, remove this. There we go. All good. Okay. Okay. So coming back, what is the final difference? Let me write the output here also, by the way. The output is going to be only object object. That is what you have seen in the example. So the final outcome is what? The final outcome is this is used, this as a keyword is used in very different senses from error function versus a normal function. In a normal function, it represents which object called that. It is it a window, it can be a document, it can be a button. But in error function, this, this keyword represents the object that defined the error function. So no matter where you call it from, you call it from window, you call it, you call it from page loading, you call it from button, output will remain the same. Okay. Cool, guys. This part clear to all. Let me know. Any doubt, please type. Otherwise, type clear in the chat. All clear? Cool. Now, next thing that I want to do is variables we have not. We don't need to spend time on variables where let and cost. These are the only things that we have spent much time in detail. So same thing. Array methods, which will be important in React. That's what I want to cover. One is going to be the map method, which is very important that we are going to discuss. And then we'll go for destructuring. So let me remove this. And let me paste it here. The next topic is going to be S6 array methods. That's what we are going to discuss. In that map method is the most important ones. Give me one minute. We'll continue with array methods. I guess continuing back. So we have to discuss. We have to discuss what? We have to discuss. We have already discussed about the ES6. We have talk about the classes, arrow functions, variables. Now we're going to discuss about the array methods and destructuring, right? Destructuring is not just going to be important for just your ES6, but also when we'll go for the props one. Because a lot of times I'll be passing not as a complete object, I'll be passing separate separate entities or props out of it. So I'll go to props, destructuring would be more important there, right? And once we are done with this, once we are done with this, then we can start with our React.js projects. But prior to that, I want to complete that all. So let's continue with our ES6 array methods. Now in terms of array method, which array method we're going to discuss? We are going to discuss map method. Rest of the array methods we have already discussed, if you guys remember. We discuss splice, we discuss slice, and we discuss subpart as well. So all these three array methods we have already discussed in detail, not discussing them again. But most useful method in most useful array method array method in React is dot map. Okay, so let's see what does dot map does. dot map method allows to run a function on each item repeating it again the dot map method allows to run a function on each item in the array okay so each element in the array you are able to run a function on it returning a new array As a result, repeating it again, inside the complete array, all the elements dot map method allows me to run function on each of these individual elements such that I'll be returning a new array as a result. Okay. In React, what we do, we don't call it array, we call it list in React. So in React, map 
can be used to generate list. Okay. Map can be used to generate list. Let's have quickly have a look at the code and then we can take an example. Okay. Let's go back to our react.html. Then I'll be running that code. Yep, here it is. I'm going to refresh it and update it with our HTML code. So running React code in HTML. Now moving back, what do I want to do here is I quickly want to define few array. I define constant. Constant my array equal to let's say a b and c that's it a simple element in the array although what i do want to do is i want to run function on each part of the array so now i define constant my list equal to this my array I'm going to map it with whom? All the item. This item. Arrow function. Space. Item. Close the arrow function. Okay. Now remove this react dom dot render. What do I want to render? I want to render my list. Where do I want to render? I want to render in my document.get element by ID root. Now let's see the output we are going to see. This is done. Refresh this, move it here. Close this, move it here. There you go. Okay. Constant my equal to ABC. I have successfully created this ABC. What else? This script type should be fine. Constant my list equal to my array dot map. I have mapped this item with each individual item. This is fine. My script should not finish here. Why did it finish here? Yeah, now my p tag finishes here, which is also fine. Now I'm going to render that. Okay. Let's make some few lists. You don't add me classes. Okay. All right. What I'm doing in this, this is obviously a red code, as you can see. We are now familiar with how to run the red code inside HTML, and that's exactly what you're doing in any of the React application. What you're doing here is I just defined a simple JavaScript my array, or you can even say a normal JavaScript my array with a constant. So three by three values it contains a tutor, academy, and classes. Three elements are present in there. Line number 20 is a JavaScript code. Line number 22 is a React code. React means JSX code. React is a library. We don't say React code. When we say React code, we're talking about JSX code. The syntax used in React is JSX only. This is JavaScript. This is JSX. Let me see if I what do I do is I define my list equal to my array dot map. What does map does map just creates a mapping of every element in the array with a function. Repeating map creates a mapping of every element in the array with a function. So as you can see inside the map, this is a function. Every element, which is item is mapped with this item. What does that mean? You go to each item and create it into a function. So tutor, academy, classes, they will be converting into HTML element of P tag, which is paragraph tag. So in my paragraph tag, I'm able to see tutor, then academy, then classes. Okay. And now line number 24, again, JSX code, react dom dot render. Render means what do I need to render? I need to render my list. Where do I need to render? I need to render it document.get element by ID root. Okay. One thing to be very clear, 
you would be asking, some of you guys might ask, why I have not written it like this? Because in last time I have written like this, why I am not writing it like this? Because my list is just a constant. If it was a function or a class or any kind of component, if it was class component or functional component, I would be writing this. But since it is just a function, sorry, since it is just a value or basically a constant list, that's why I've just kept it like this. Now let's go there and run the code. What do you see? Tutored Academy classes, three different paragraph tags. From one array, you have created a map function to render and react code to give it as three different parameters. That is what map does. Okay. And what else? I can convert it into H1 also. So let's convert it into H1. Go back there. Refresh. Now it is rendered in H1. Tutor Academy in classes. Okay. Going back to Sublime Text again. This is the code that we had. Just going to paste this code. There you go. These three lines of code that we have. And the output that you have is what? Now let's write the complete code because we're running it inside React. So not to create any confusion. Okay, output you got was to taught academic classes. All right, those array elements that we have that has been mapped to different functions. That was ES6 array methods. Rest of the array methods we have discussed, only the map method we have not discussed that we have discussed now. Now we are done, pretty much we are done with all the what we need in the React ES6. Now I'm going to start with another very important topic, which is which you're going to use very actively in our React code that is called destruction. So let's mark this as done. We have roughly 20 minutes. Let's quickly start with destructuring. Let's try to finish this as much as we can and then we'll move to next. ES6 destructuring. Okay. Again, I'm marking it as very, very important. This is a very important topic in interview. And even as part of a prop, when you have to break an object into different parts, that is where you can go for destructuring. So let's start with what is destructuring. Okay. Destructuring is is taking out or carving out whatever you want to say only the required items in the container or in the object. In an object or in a container, if I'm only using the required items rather than the whole object, rather than whole object or complete object, that is what we call as destructuring. Only extract what is needed. Okay, only extract what is needed. I don't need the whole object. I don't need the whole container. I just want certain values out of it. Maybe in order, maybe not in order. That is what that, that is actually what destructuring is used for. Now let's try to understand this one by one. Starting with destructuring arrays, because array is most popular one. Everybody knows. Let's start with destructuring arrays. For that, I want to show you on lead code. So I'm just coming back here. I am going to open my lead code screen. Let me know if my lead code screen is visible to all, which it should be now. Everybody can see my lead code screen. Do let me know. Okay. If everybody can see it, now I'm going to change it to JavaScript. Let's start with the very basic code. I say constant my array equal to 
I can take the same example. If you don't add me. Okay. Now I want to create three different keywords. First name equal to my area zero. Copy this, paste it, paste it. Give a semicolon. This is first, this is second, this is third. Okay. And you can definitely print all of them. Okay. Quickly tell me the output, guys. Quickly tell me the output. Easy, right? My array zero, my array one, my array two. This is what I wanted to create, but anyways, zero, zero, zero. My array zero, my array one, my array two. So my array zero is tutor. It becomes academy, it becomes classes. If I run the code, it will give me tutor academy classes. There is no destructuring here. There is no destructuring here. This is without destructuring. Okay. Without destructuring. Means array is given to me or a list of values given to me. What I want to do is I want to carve out specific parts. If I have to carve out specific parts, how I can do that? If I want to take, let's say, academy out of it or classes out of it, what do I need? I need to know its index, right? So when I say first, it takes the first value, then second value, then third value. And I'm able to print that. This is without destructure. Now I'm going to show you what happens with destructuring, how destructuring has made our life easier. So this is without destructuring and output you can see, it was this. It was this, okay? Now I go back, let's start with, with destructuring. Same thing, rather than keeping it these three times, first, second, third, what I can do is, which is much more optimized ways. Let's ignore this. I can simply type first, second, and third. That's it. And now if you run the code, this will give you the exact same output. Understand this. What has happened? Although I understand the latency has increased a bit, that is fine because restructuring increases a bit of latency that you can see 62 words MS versus 67 MS. But prior to that, if you observe carefully, what this, what this destructuring has actually done for me? Destructuring has provided me, initially I have to define for all the values. Let's say my array contains 100 values. I need to define for all the values, one, two, three, so on and so forth. But if I want to just keep these three values in one liner, I want to decompose or destructure my array my array contained three values. I want to destructure into those three val values. I got this output in these three values. That is what destructuring is. Okay. Popping this and pasting it here. This is with destructuring, output is same. Okay. Now, one more thing to add here. What if One more thing to add here. What if I want only the first and third value? I don't want any second value. Repeating, I only want the first and third value. I only, I don't want the second value. If I do this, what will be the output? You guys tell me first. Let's remove this. If I do this, what will be the output? Tutor classes. Okay. Anybody else? Tutor classes, tutor classes. Okay. Anybody else? This should give you an error. Or if not error, it's giving you tutor academy. Why? What is going to happen? It's going to read element by element. 
when you say my array, first and third, it does not know third means the third part, right? Programming does not know that you have named it as third. It tried to destructure it. It says, hey, this array contains three values, but in these three values, it is asking me to destructure in only two values. Obviously, it will read from left to right. So first value destructured, second value destructured, third value not destructured because there is no third parameter there. If there was third parameter, it would have destructured. That is why it gives you the output as only two to order academy. But if I want to skip one part, and if I just want to know third part, you can just directly give a space. That's it. The moment you directly give a space, you have skipped it. Now your first and third will give you two to order classes. Okay. This is what I wanted to show with restructuring. Order is important. So you can skip it and you can get the output as well. Put a note here. The order that the variables are declared are in, is important. And what else? You may skip the values while destructure using just comma. There goes your code. There goes your output for this one, which is just tutorial and classes. All right, we have seen the destructuring in the case of an array. In the case of objects, it's even even inter even more interesting, and that's what we are going to discuss. Okay, destructuring arrays. The next topic we are going to have is destructuring objects, which is more important. That we are going to discuss now. How do I destructure a particular object? And what is the advantage of destructuring a particular object? Let's see. Going back to lead code again. Quickly writing the code. We are running quite short on time. There you go. Let's quickly create an constant, an object. Let's see. Constant batch. So variable, so let's keep it batch. In that, we can type about name. So subject one. What else? We can talk about topic. That is here. And we can talk about year that is 2023. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to define my function. Let's call it print. And print is going to use batch. And what I'm going to keep a message constant message equal to my batch name my tutorial batch as topic And I can give batch dot topic, right? Something like this. That's it. Call this print function in console dot log and run the code. I'm gonna clear this. I'm just going to pass batch here. Okay. Now run the code. What does it say? Undefined. Okay. That is interesting. Let's see undefined. Constant batch I have defined. This is just an object that is find. And what else? Constant message is this. 
I am calling print batch. Okay. Let's call print batch. No, no, this is not required. Print and that is going to be a batch. Working fine. Console.log. Again, undefined. I have written this message. Okay. I have to return something from the function. Silly error, but it's okay. We are not returning something from the function. Makes sense. Run the code. Now, if you look at the output, what is happening? This, I have an object. Now, out of that object, what is the purpose of destructuring? The purpose of destructuring is that I want to use only certain items. I don't want to use the whole object, whole container, whole array. Certain object I want to use. For example, in this case, I'm just using the name. I'm just using the topic. And then just, that's it. Name and topic I'm using. Nothing else I'm using. I'm not using subject. I'm not using error. This is not destructuring. This is prior to destructuring. I'm typing my constant message. My batch name has topic, batch topic. So my tutor batch name, my tutor batch has topic react. That's it. Simple. This is without destructuring. If I have to use something without destructuring, I have to go with this long format that, hey, I want to use this, this, and this. This is something without destructuring. However, if you do with destructuring, now we are going to see how it is going to make our life easier. Output for without destructuring, copy this, paste it here. Same thing I'm going to change in with destructuring and let's see how we are able to do it. With destructuring, I want to do is, I want to use an object inside a function with only specific object that I want to use. So I will only type, I will only require what I actually need to use. So I will not be passing this complete batch as a function. This batch, which I passed as a parameter, I don't want to pass it. What I do want to pass is, Destructure this and only part the required details. For example, if I don't need certain items, I'm just going to skip those items. So let's pass it as name, pass it as topic. That's it. Okay. And you can give whatever your name is, whatever your topic is. Then the code. Okay, output is exactly same. And you can look at the latency. This is 121 milliseconds and this is 72 milliseconds. 50 millisecond you have reduced and not just 50 millisecond, ideally the way you should look at is almost half of the latency. That is why destruction is important. I'm able to achieve, able to achieve that because Prior to destructuring, I was passing the entire object. Now try to visualize it. Your object contains 1,000 values. You were, you were passing all 1,000 values prior to it. Now, if I need to use only two values out of it, order of item doesn't matter. Order of item doesn't matter because these are the object, right? So name, comma, topic. In an array, order matters. But in this case, order doesn't matter because name and topic are different parts. So when I say my name, I'm just talking about the name keyword to it. When I say topic, I'm talking about the topic keyword to it. So run the code, order in doesn't matter. And that is how you see. Now it has become 67 milliseconds. So that is fine. It's even reducing. Rather than calling the entire function or the entire object, I can actually pin down on what actually I need, right? So just reduce the latency by very, very, very large margin. After this, paste it here. Okay. That is something that we have done in today's class. Let me quickly walk you through the revision and then we can go to the next part. So this is also done. In the next class, we're going to start with spread operator and then continue with the next of the part. We quickly revise what is React.js, what is the library, how does React works? It creates a virtual DOM in the memory and only changes what needs to be changed. Okay. We talked about getting started with React. We talked about in the production app, which we have seen in the last class. 
how to use it locally that we start with today how you create locally what are these three lines what are these three lines for we have seen the final code we have seen the output as well okay then we start with react es6 what are going to be the important part to cover in es6 first we cover the react classes how we can use the react classes in classes we talked about defining a class invoking constructor invoking function and then finally inheritance arrow functions we have already covered i just told you the difference of use of this keyword in arrow function in regular function it just represents the object that called the function in object in in regular function just define the object that called the function arrow function it represents the object that defined the arrow function okay then we talked about for arrow functions we have seen the code we have seen the output we talked about the array methods for map it converts into functions for each element then finally destructuring which is just picking out only the required items and only extract what is needed Destructuring in arrays we have seen, destructuring in objects we have seen, and we have seen the informations latency. All of that we have covered this in today's class.